Is Starlink right for your RV or boat travels? In these videos, we're going to go over the pros and cons to help you decide if Starlink is a fit for you. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we're with the Mobile Internet Resource Center where we track mobile internet options for RVers and boaters. And of course, Starlink is a popular <laughs> option for yeah. our community. Now we are going to do this video in three parts. This one will be going over the pros and cons of Starlink and giving you an overview of what the technology is. We have two other videos that go in this series, one on the data plans and the other on the equipment. And we're doing that because Starlink changes this stuff so often, this will hopefully help us keep this content evergreen. <laughs> Starlink changes? Really? Really? Yeah, <laughs> crazy. So first of all, what is Starlink? Okay, so Starlink is a satellite constellation put into orbit by SpaceX, a company founded by Elon Musk, and it is unprecedented. It has more satellites in Starlink than basically exist in orbit for all other purposes. There are currently over 4,000, pushing towards 5,000 satellites in the Starlink constellation. And this makes it a very, very different type of thing than the traditional old school geostationary satellites that were used for um, satellite communication. The old school satellites and the kind you might still be using for satellite TV, they sit in one place, one big giant satellite sits in one place pinned over the equator, so you aim at it, the dish doesn't move. Locks in place, is aiming at that satellite. You can aim between trees, it's there. But because it's so far away over the equator and way out in orbit, it takes a long time for your data to go back and forth to the satellite. So there's a lot of built-in latency that is just the laws of physics and the speed of light. But you know, it works great for certain things. But these new generation of low Earth orbit satellite constellations, the satellites are much, much lower, just a few hundred miles in the sky. And there's thousands of them because well, they're moving through the sky. And this means it takes a completely different kind of satellite dish receiver here to track them because you're not actually going to be aiming the dish and constantly having it pivot and move. You're just having it digitally with a um, internally track multiple satellites and try to lock onto one at a time. The good news of that is, well, much lower latency, you know, no delays, but the bad news is, well, the satellites are moving, so if they pass behind a tree, a building, a branch, a, a mountain, um, you can lose your signal. So there's a potential far dropout. So it's a totally exciting new type of satellite technology, requires a lot of satellites to do it, and has some pros and cons. So first of all, where does it make sense to use Starlink? It's a great complement to cellular in places where there is not great cellular signal. So this can really help expand out your options of where you can go and not being dependent upon where there are cell towers. So that is great. It gets you in a lot of more remote places that you can go. And of course it works where cellular is as well. Another great advantage of Starlink is it doesn't know borders. So you can go across your borders and it still works. They have data plans that allow you to work anywhere within your continent. Now there are some uh, stipulations on how long you can be out of your home country, but you can cross borders like into Canada and Mexico without it having any roaming consideration. So it's great for international travel as well. And there are also global options which allow you to go all over the globe. Now you know, this makes Starlink a really great solution for um, RVers and cruisers who are often going to places where they don't have that easy coverage and stuff. And it even actually works while crossing oceans with certain costs and extra uh, complications that we'll cover when we get to data plans. But you can basically use Starlink, um, you know, almost all over the place and other than a few countries where SpaceX does not have permission or licenses like, you know, China, Russia, Iran. So if you're going to those places, well, you're, you're, all bets are off in that case. But you can use Starlink just about anywhere. So it's a great addition for RVers and cruisers to keep as part of their technology arsenal for keeping connected. And the other great thing about it is it is actually really easy to use and set up. You know, you basically stick this on its little mount and uh, turn it on, and a few minutes later you are online, which is a pretty impressive uh, thing. So simple to use, works just about everywhere, and is. Well, Pretty fabulous. And there are options for using it in a fixed location as well as using it portably so you can take it where you go and set it up as well as in motion use. So lots of great options whether you need it in motion or you just want to use it at your next campsite or anchorage. All right if Starlink is so great can you just get it and that be your one and only <laughs> solution? 
And we think for most of us, probably not. So here are some of the considerations of what might make Startlink not work where you want it to. First is obstructions. Now in this location, we have nothing between us and the sky. Starlink is going to work just fine here. But if we want to camp under trees, some places where there's a lot of forest cover, those trees can cause temporary dropouts in Starlink. Sometimes they're small and not that noticeable and easy to overcome, especially if you're just streaming like Netflix. Netflix works really well with buffering. But if you need to do an upload, you need to do a video conference or a broadcast, those sort of dropouts can make it extremely difficult to stay connected. Same is true with extreme weather. So if there's heavy rain, hail, heavy snow, those sorts of things can also cause dropouts that may impact your Starlink performance. Okay, and then other things to keep in mind is, well, Starlink, particularly for a lot of our viewers, it's kind of big and bulky equipment. The Starlink standard dish that we have here is designed to be kind of mostly set up just once, but if you want to pack it up and store it and fit in your RV, this takes a lot of space to store and the storage stand as well and then to set it up wherever you go. So it's got this kind of cumbersome setup, teardown and storage process, which in a small RV like a van can be quite significant. If you want the larger Starlink, the flat high performance, which we'll talk about in the hardware video coming up, that one is actually twice this size, but it's designed to be mounted permanently on top of a vehicle. So we'd lose the flexibility of being able to set this out and set it far away from those trees that might've been causing obstruction issues. So you, instead you have to move your RV out away from that much delighted shade. So that is a significant consideration. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the power consumption. Cellular uses a lot less power than Starlink. And if you're going to want to keep Starlink on 24 seven, you're going to need a pretty hefty power system. This is basically uses as much power as a residential refrigerator sucking out, or sucking down your RV battery and or your solar system and stuff. So something that you might have want to consider turning off when you're not actively using it or well, designing your electrical system around it. The flat HP, the larger Starlink uses even t more power, twice as much. So very, very hefty power consumption issues. And then one other thing that a lot of people don't really take into account with Starlink is Though SpaceX often has really good download speeds, assuming there's not congestion, it's an asymmetric network, which means downloads are fast, uploads are slow. And if the kind of work you do requires a lot of uploads, like um, doing video broadcast work or uploading big videos or files to YouTube or other places, Starlink might not have enough upload capacity for you. The uploads are substantially less than the downloads and are more impacted by other factors like weather and whatnot. Yeah, this video will not be uploaded over no. Starlink. All right, so speaking of congestion. So when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have a satellite to yourself or just a few of your other neighbors out there, you're gonna get great performance. But if you were in a more congested area where that one single satellite is serving hundreds of Starlink customers. Or thousands. Or thousands, then you're gonna have congestion, just like you would if you are on an overpopulated cell tower, which means you'll get slower speeds. And if you were on the mobile plan, which is always best effort service, you could even have unusable speeds. So that is definitely a consideration is if you're going to be traveling in places where you're gonna be near population centers or with a whole bunch of RVers collected in one place, then who are using Starlink, then you're gonna also have some of those congestion issues that we've all gotten used to with cellular. Next is customer service. Starlink doesn't have the greatest customer service. You can only contact them through your account via email and you can may, maybe have several iterations. And some of the parts like the cabling are proprietary to Starlink. You can't just go and pick up a new cable. So if your cable becomes uh, squished or damaged. And it's very it, delicate. It's very delicate, unfortunately. That means you're gonna have to wait for Starlink to send you a new one. And that could sometimes be quick or it might be slow. And if you have other sorts of issues, it could take a while to get things resolved. And they definitely go through periods of time where they're really quick with emails and they can sometimes be take really spaced out. Yes. So that's a common thing that we see. Then the other consideration with Starlink. If you've been watching our videos on this channel for a while, you know they change things <laughs> a lot. We have seen several price increases with no grandfathering in. They have changed terms of service, taken away portability, taken away in motion high speed use without priority data. And we expect the changes will probably continue. And that means that if you have invested in a Starlink setup, you're just going to have to, well, put up with it or get rid of it because they will probably continue to change things as they go and they learn what their customer base needs and how much the price sensitivity is. 
So unless you're planning to stick to wide open spaces far from other people in very uncongested areas, Starlink might not be the ideal solution as your one and only solution. What we find for most people is that Starlink works best as a part of their connectivity arsenal, usually combined with cellular, often actually bonded with cellular, so you're using Starlink and cellular simultaneously with a smart load balancing or bonding router to actually put those two connections into use. So that is something to keep in mind. It's like, don't think of Starlink as your one and only way to get online. So we do have a guide that goes over using Starlink with other sorts of uh, internet sources like cellular or Wi-Fi. But where do you get Starlink? Well, the first <laughs> place to go is Starlink's website, starlink.com. You will see they have a whole bunch of different options listed at the top from Rome, mobile, maritime, or probably the options you want to start with. And we will be going over in a other videos in this series what the options are for data plans and the equipment. So follow up with those videos so that you know how to navigate those websites because it can be a touch confusing uh, on how which options are available with each of those use cases. Starlink is also partnering with some third parties for reselling their equipment. Uh, WineGuard in the RV space and Mobile Must Have are able to sell the high performance dish. And we are also seeing the standard dish available in some uh, major retailers as Depot. well. Great options to get Starlink, not just direct from Starlink, which is, which is, is great. If you would like more information on Starlink and if it's right for you, to please follow up with our full guide to Starlink at rvmobileinternet.com slash Starlink, link right down below. And you can dive into our fully built out resource center with a lot more information available to our members who make all of our content possible here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We're not selling this. We don't get affiliate kickbacks. Uh, Starlink doesn't have affiliate kickbacks to even nope. <laughs> be concerned. No, no free with. service, no influencer or anything. Nope. We're paying for this. <laughs> yep. um, but our members make all of our unbiased content possible. So without them, well, we're just very thankful for that. <laughs> so they get a lot of extra resources as well. Um, we will have two more videos coming up in this series, one on the data plans and one on the equipment. And both of those are subject to change. So we'll always try to keep it updated as to which one is the current one. So. Until the next video, the bandwidth <laughs> be <space>. with you. <laughs> <laughs> These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.